Okay, well here we are. We're going to begin a new series entitled Seven Habits of Highly Effective Christians, Elders, Ministers, and Deacons. And this is the first in the three uh, sessions and it is entitled uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Christians. Now, the, uh, the idea for the titles and approach come from Stephen Covey's popular book of a few years ago entitled the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about this, uh, about this book further on in the series, but suffice to say that uh, Mr. Covey's uh, research found that highly effective and thus successful people who made an impact in their various fields shared a specific set of character traits and habits which he analyzed and summarized into seven categories. That's what his book was about. Well, I believe that the same case can be made for the church and those who play different roles in the church. From the saints in the pew to the ministers in the pulpit, from those who have special responsibilities to those who are responsible for the overall leadership in the church. Uh, there are characteristics and habits that distinguish those who are effective and successful in their personal walk with Jesus as Christians, as well as those who serve as preachers and deacons and elders. So as Christians, you know, we, we all need to examine ourselves in order to carry out a more, dynamic, a more dynamic ministry to one another and the community. And I think it's important to have a, a clear standard to strive for, you know, to, to measure ourselves against as we serve the cause of Christ in the various roles that we've been given by the Spirit uh, in the church. Now, before we get into you know, the seven habits of highly effective preachers, elders, so on and so forth, I want you to know that uh, all of you have some of these habits developed to various degrees, uh, and this is depending on your, your maturity, your knowledge, your commitment to Christ, so on and so forth. And please realize also that, that none of us will have all of these habits perfectly developed because the, you know, the purpose of the lessons and the series that I'm doing is to encourage you and not to discourage you. So what I'm giving you is the ideal to shoot for, the, the template to copy in your striving to grow as a Christian at every level of maturity and responsibility. Now remember, the title of the series emphasizes the fact that Christians at every stage have certain habits that enable them to be effective and thus successful. So if we parse the title, let's start by parsing the title, we have two key words. Uh, one word is habits, you know, the seven habits. Habits, of course, are actions that are ingrained that have become natural because of continued repetition. Things we do without thinking and, uh, and, and things we do with skill and precision. The other word in the, uh, in the title is seven habits of highly effective Christians, elders, and so on, effective. This word refers to the quality of our lives and the quality of our service. You know, people can be Christians and they can serve as deacons or preachers or elders in name and in title, but to be effective as disciples of Jesus or effective as His ministers, elders or deacons means that we produce fruit in our personal spiritual lives as well as in our particular ministries. You know, a person can wear the title without actually being very effective. And so these lessons that I'll be sharing with you will describe the habits cultivated and ingrained in those who actually are effective as Christians and as Christian leaders, something I hope that all of you will begin to strive for from this day forward. All right, now we know that Christians don't just come out of the waters of baptism and immediately become effective as saints. Uh, we also know that uh, through practice and discipline in the Holy Spirit, they cultivate habits that become a natural part of their lives and eventually 
enable them to become more and more effective as Christians in the service of the Lord and His church. You know, it's, not a, it's not an overnight thing, it takes time. These, these, these habits take time to cultivate in our spiritual lives. Now, there are many of these type of habits. You know, we could have had 20, we could have had 50, but, but I've chosen seven common habits of highly effective Christians that I have read about in the scriptures themselves and that I have seen over the last 35 years uh, of ministry. Um, things that I've seen in brothers and sisters who have had great success as disciples of Christ. So I want to share these with you, the seven habits of effective Christians. That's the session we're going to do today. All right, we ready? Okay, habit number one. Highly effective Christians have the habit of reading and obeying God's word. The habit of reading and obeying God's word. Effective Christians are effective because their lives are powered by the word of God. They know what God says and that knowledge empowers them to make right choices in a more consistent way. It helps them to resist temptation because they have God's word on their heart and on their minds. You know, when you know the right thing to do, it's a lot easier to do it. They're more able to stand up for right, more able to give right advice, to say the right thing at the right time because they know what right is. They can even quote it from God's word. You know, Paul congratulates Timothy, the young evangelist, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, when he tells them that you know, Timothy knew the holy writings from an early age. He was familiar with God's word early on in his life, and this knowledge led him to salvation. But this knowledge also led Timothy into his vocation as an evangelist. As a, as a partner with Paul in missions and as an example of effective Christianity for all future generations. You know, today we're, we're still learning about how to be Christians and especially how to be good uh, preachers by studying the life of, of Timothy. So you can't be very effective as a Christian in preserving your faith or sharing it with others if you don't know and obey the word and you cannot know God's word unless you read it on a consistent basis. So effective Christians begin to kind of pull away from immaturity and entanglement with sin and the world to the degree that they develop the number one habit of reading the Bible on a regular basis. Habit number two, highly effective Christians have an active prayer life. You know, we, we can't effectively experience the life of Jesus Christ unless we read about it in God's word. God cannot uh, effectively change and shape and mold our lives unless we share it with Him in prayer. He talks to us through His word, we talk to Him through prayer. I mean, look at the people in the New Testament that God used in a mighty way. Were they not men and women of prayer? I mean, Jesus, I mean, the Son of God Himself, and yet He prayed uh, at every step of His ministry. John the Apostle was in prayer when he had the vision to write the book of Revelation. Paul the Apostle prayed constantly for direction in his ministry. Lydia was at a prayer meeting when she was converted. And so the habit of prayer is what keeps us tuned in to God and sensitive to the spirit within us. Without the habit of prayer, the noisy demands of the world and the impulses of our flesh are the only things that we can hear. The effective Christian succeeds in keeping the faith and growing in faith because he stays in touch with the Spirit and God through prayer. Habit number three, the highly effective Christian has the habit of setting spiritual goals. You know, there's a saying in business, if you don't plan for success, then you're planning to fail. You know, whether it's a business or a school or a family or a sports team, everyone needs to plan ahead. I mean, what makes us think that it's any different for our spiritual lives? Effective Christianity requires that we, we set personal spiritual goals and with prayer and personal commitment, we actually work towards these goals. 
You know, there's no gold medalist at the Olympics who ever stood on a winner's uh, podium without having made a decision to pursue a personal goal long before that day. There's no politician who ever won an election without setting this victory as part of his or her career strategy. So whether it's to be more faithful to services or start helping out in some way or a commitment to change a bad habit for a good habit or perhaps doing a better job in what we've already been given to do, we don't become more effective as Christians unless we visualize a realistic goal and strategize a way of achieving it and then commit ourselves to reaching it in a certain time frame with help from God through faith in Christ. Paul the Apostle saw and heard Jesus. He could perform miracles. He established the church in the Roman Empire, but he was continually setting new goals for himself. You know, he wanted to go east to Asia, or he wanted to evangelize Spain after he had been in Rome. And so he did these things, he set these goals in order to widen his vision for the future and keep his spiritual adrenaline pumping. You, you want to be you know, energized spiritually, set some spiritual goals and start working towards them. All right, habit number four, highly effective Christians cultivate the talents of others. You know, I, I don't know where I would be without uh, Jim Metter or Hemsey Brown or Charles Branch or Stafford North or Lewis Thompson, Edsel Hughes, just to name a few people uh, that appeared in my uh, spiritual life and uh, development. These are all people who at one time or another in my Christian life helped me to grow spiritually. Each of these were effective Christians who took the time to help cultivate different aspects of my Christian life and my ministry. They were my mentors at various stages of my personal spiritual development. You know, Jim uh, taught me how to study the word. Uh, Emmy Brown encouraged me to preach and Charles Branch made it possible for me to get training. Uh, Lewis Thompson showed me how to do local work and Brother Edsel Hughes encouraged me and gave me the strength to pull up roots and move my family to a faraway place in order to take advantage of opportunities to minister. You know, part of their effectiveness was helping me to become more effective as a Christian and then as a minister. Barnabas was one of those people in the Bible who so clearly demonstrated this habit, starting with Paul as a new convert and later continuing with Mark, the young missionary. Effective Christians realize early on that in order to stay effective, they need to build others up in the body. Solomon says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Proverbs 27 verse 17. And then Paul says it in another way in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. He says, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Now I want you to note one thing about this passage. Paul says that the body builds itself up. In other words, when I build you up, I'm also building myself up. And so effective Christians are easy to spot. They're the ones asking for volunteers, not just volunteering to do things, they're asking for volunteers. They're training other people. You know when there's somebody in your congregation you know, that's searching for volunteers, organizing something you know, to do on behalf of the church, that person is an effective Christian, building up uh, others. All right, habit number five, uh, highly effective Christians take responsibility for souls. You know, Paul says to the Philippians in chapter two, verse 12 of his letter, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And it was said of the Bereans that they examined the scriptures daily, Acts chapter 17, verse 11. And they did so to verify if Paul's preaching was accurate according to God's, according to God's word. 
you know, highly effective Christians take responsibility for their own souls, very important. Hmm. And they also take responsibility for the souls of others, especially the lost. Now they're effective because they know that Christianity is not a game and faith is not a crutch for the weak. Effective Christians make a difference in their congregations and in the world because they understand that the stakes are very high, eternal life, and the enemy is very dangerous, Satan. You know, Harry Truman, the former president of the United States, was very popular as a tough-minded, no-nonsense politician and leader. And he had a sign on his desk that said, the buck stops here. And of course, we know what that means. It means that he was the president and he was responsible and he knew it. He knew he was responsible. So we are each responsible for our souls, not the preacher. The preacher doesn't get blamed for the loss of our souls, not the elders. In the end, we will be judged on what we said and what we did. This is what Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.10. And so effective Christians know this and they, they don't waste their time or their spiritual energy on things that would endanger the most precious possession that they have. They have the habit of putting what is good for souls first. I mean, they do that consistently. This is why these brethren are so interested in saving souls and why they're so good at it and why they work hard in evangelism and visitation. They know the value of a human soul. Think back to the person who brought you to Christ or perhaps the person who brought you back to Christ. I'm sure that that brother or that sister fit very well my profile of the effective Christian. All right, habit number six. Highly effective Christians have the habit of serving others. Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. I mean, do you think any of us would be here if Christ came as a, you know, a royal king? If the Messiah showed up as a king with attendants, receiving service that he actually deserved, and people bowing down to him, and so on and so forth? Do you think, really? We, we'd all be here for that? I mean, that's not what happened, right? We're here with the hope of heaven today because Jesus Christ did exactly the opposite of that. He emptied Himself, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, taking the form of a bond servant. What saved us was His very effective service on the bloody cross of Calvary. And what continues the salvation that he delivered once for all is the effective service of millions of men and women who give themselves in service to reach each new generation of souls who are lost without Jesus Christ. Effective Christians have cultivated the character of Christ within themselves by cultivating His character of selfless service to other people for their good and their advantage and their salvation. For effective Christians, uh, service is not an inconvenience that they must bear in order to avoid guilt. Actually, for effective Christians, they're like you know, Epaphroditus. Service is a way of life born out of love for Jesus Christ. All right, highly effective Christians, one more habit. Highly effective Christians uh, consistently remain focused on the kingdom. You know, more Christians lose their way because they just don't pay attention. You know, in the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus describes the person who receives the word and grows for a time, but the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word, he says, and, 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 and stops the growth. You know, Matthew 13, 23. I want you to note in this passage that the man that Jesus is talking about was not a great sinner. I mean, he did believe and he did practice his faith. He, there was growth for a time. Jesus says that what destroyed his soul were the things that all of us face each day as Christians. The things that don't seem dangerous. Uh, worry about deadlines and debts and health and family. 
busyness, you know, activities and emergencies, you know, making it and looking good and keeping up with, with other people. You know, he became focused on these things and these things drew his attention and his energy and eventually his soul into the orbit of the world. That's the danger. It's like gravity. You know? uh, uh, gravity you know, draws things down. Well, worldly gravity draws spiritual people away from focusing on the kingdom. So effective Christians have learned to keep the kingdom first and have not allowed the cares and the desires for riches, you know, the gravity of the world, if you wish, to overwhelm their spiritual lives. And when they do, they are quick to repent and refocus their attention to where it needs to be. As a matter of fact, effective Christians continue to increase their involvement, increase their love, increase their very lives in the affairs of the kingdom and decrease their involvement and their love and their lives in the world. In other words, with time, Christians begin to pull away from the gravity of worldliness. And so effective Christians know that the kingdom is forever, that the kingdom is reality, that the kingdom of God is life itself, and they also understand that the world is temporary, is sinful, and full of death. Effective Christians, they know this. I mean, they know it, they get it, and they live accordingly. All right, well, there you have them, seven habits of highly effective Christians. The, uh, there are Christians, of course, who have managed to cultivate a lifestyle that incorporates these habits. In other words, Practicing these habits has created a certain Christian character and ability that makes these men and women highly effective as disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're a new Christian and you're wondering, you know, where do I go from here? Or if you are an experienced Christian wanting to go to a kind of a higher level, then pursuing these seven habits will provide direction to a more effective Christian life and service. So once again, to become more effective as a Christian, you need to develop the habits of, first of all, reading your Bible regularly, praying to God on a daily basis, setting personal spiritual goals, cultivating your abilities and the abilities of others, taking responsibility for your soul and then the souls of the ones who are weak or lost, stepping up your rate and intensity of service, and finally, remaining focused on spiritual instead of worldly things. Of course, all of this is for those who want to become effective as Christians, as opposed to those who simply want to affect a Christian pose. There's a difference. Some people are just posing as Christians. We, we want everyone to become effective as Christians. Okay? Now, um, for some, there is no spiritual effectiveness possible because, well, there's no spirit within them. They have not yet obeyed the Spirit's initial command to repent, to be baptized, in order to be forgiven for sin and wear the name and the person of Christ. And if you haven't done that, if you're listening to this and you haven't done that, that's, that's the first step. You can't be effective as a Christian unless you become a Christian and you become a Christian by uh, confessing your faith in Christ, repenting of your sins, being immersed in the waters of baptism for forgiveness of sin and the reception of the Holy Spirit, and then beginning your walk, your development of those effective habits to be an effective Christian. For the brethren, of course, I hope that you'll see more clearly the narrow path before you in Christ that leads to effective, joyful, spirit-filled living powered by the cultivation of these habits. And I pray that God bless you as you grow to become highly effective Christians. Okay, well that's session number one in the series. I'm going to pick it up again in session number two and we're going to look at highly effective uh, preachers and elders. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>